Porsche first gave one of its cars the GTS treatment in the last gasps of the 911 997's lifespan, breathing new life into the outgoing model. Then, on the coattails of its success, the GTS treatment was also applied to the Boxster. I don't believe any of us were prepared for just how popular this particular sports car would be, nor were we prepared for it being the last Boxster to have this glorious six-cylinder, naturally aspirated 3.4-litre engine. The passing of this car and the impressive power plant from Porsche's lineup was bemoaned by many. The 718 Boxster that followed simply didn't enjoy this car's approval rating. So if you're wondering what it is that the aficionados say we are missing with a modern car, join me, Roger Bailey, to drive this near perfect 2015 example to find out. It takes a steady nerve to tamper with an already perfect recipe, but back in 2014, Porsche did just that with the Boxster and improved what was an already pretty flawless package. And the near flawless example we are lucky to be driving here today demonstrates how properly made cars can stay in great shape once they pass their first flush of youth. Want to hear the sound of youth? with more on this shortly but first though we must just thank my great friend Rob for the loan of this cracking car and approaching the 981 Boxster GTS you initially notice just how low it is how elegant the proportions are and how from any angle this mid-engine sports car has the near perfect form the GTS tweaks weren't just cosmetic of course, oh no, those Porsche designers massaged our car with engineering improvements aimed at enhancing the way the already perfectly set up Boxster performed. You could of course be forgiven for thinking the GTS is just a visually enhanced Boxster S, however to put the GT in front of the S, the sonorous 3.4 litre crackling flat 6 has been massaged to give it an extra 15 brake horsepower and a larger helping of torque, boosting the naturally aspirated motor to 326 brake horsepower and 370 newton meters of torque. The chassis got dropped by 10 millimeters and was treated to Porsche's full gamut of acronym laden trickery such as PASM, that's Porsche's highly effective stability management system. The GTS was also treated to its own front bumper as well as larger 20 inch alloys and reconfigured front air intakes allowing it to take in more cooling air. The GTS interior treatment then as now included plenty of Alcantara with carbon fibre trimmings and while I'm no fan of these materials, this cockpit is undeniably cossety, ergonomically near perfect and as always exudes that unique Porsche quality. Porsche could have added more adornment and power but that is not the GTS way. You see the GTS's conservatism is its essence. The standard 981 Boxster was already a delicately balanced car with every facet of ride, engine, steering, handling in such perfect harmony that packing it with a load more power could have risked throwing the whole balance out of kilter. So the GTS feels unsurprisingly very much like a Boxster S, but with the wick turned up just a few more percent, riding nicely, steering progressively, dispatching corners with ruthless simplicity, there really isn't a more intuitive driver's car out there. You're never aware of its mass shifting about trying to work out whether there's more grip front or rear. You just stick the GTS into the corner and follow the line, the Boxster gently taking you on the fastest way around. Zero to 60 comes up in 4.5 seconds, helped by the PDK gearbox, the manual variant taking just a little bit longer, yet it doesn't feel noticeably faster than the standard Boxster S. That power hike after all is a mere 5%, but maybe there's a little more urgency towards the top of the rev range. Where it really wins though is the GTS's redesigned exhaust blasting out a ripping soundtrack of cracks and pops and as you wind the naturally aspirated flat 6 up to its 7800 rpm redline it will howl like a banshee. Some 
will want more power of course and it's interesting to consider why Porsche didn't go further in its GTS overhaul. After all, the Boxster chassis is more than capable of handling a whole load more grunt. I suspect it might stem from an earnest desire to keep the Boxster from treading on the toes of the 911. So this Boxster is about more than mere numbers. It's the best real world roadster out there and in GTS form made just a little bit sharper. I really can't think of what more we could want. Surely we couldn't want for a better exhaust sound. The newer and latest 4 litre 6 cylinder engines sadly don't quite match up to this 981. And if there is a better sounding car of this type for this kind of money, I'd love to know. Perhaps you could use the comment section below to tell me if you agree or if you can think of an alternative. <laughs> While the tweaks Porsche made over the standard Boxster back in 2014 may have been minor, they went and hit that sweet spot once again. They made the Boxster GTS one of the most capable and engaging cars on the road and it remains so until perhaps the eagerly awaited 2020 Boxster GTS hits the showrooms. Yes, you can get faster cars for less money, but really, you wouldn't want to. It's impossible to walk away from this sports car without a smile on your face. Drive it with the roof down and that howling, rasping engine note will be in your mind long after you have put the car away. The GTS treatments on the Boxster added even more sparkle to an already shining light. And if you want to one, and you can find one, I'd be quick. So thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and comments are always welcomed. I read every single one and reply to most. And if you haven't already, please think about subscribing. And if you click that little notification bell, I'll send you another video.